Hello Universe, Josh here. I'm doing a video response to Woodward, and this is going to be about D&D uh, &D, and it's about alignment. Um, and uh, Woodward was asking the question, do you like alignment in your role-playing games like D&D? &D we'll just take the example of D&D uh, &D 3.5 um, to be uh, specific about it, so we're talking about the same thing. Um, my answer is yes, I like alignment, and this video is going to be trying to defend it. Um, so the first question I just uh, want to address is, people say it's constrictive, and um, I guess some people think that's kind of a good thing, some kind of think it's a bad thing, um, and uh, I, I don't, well, I should point out my interpretation of alignment might not you might not find it in any books uh, published, you know, for D and D or or whatever. For example, my interpretation has kind of evolved over the years, and I've kind of changed my mind and uh, about how different aspects of it work. But I'll tell you this: I don't think it should be restrictive. I don't think that's why alignment is in the game, and I don't think um, that's a plus, and I don't think it has to be like. Um, if you're the DM and you're running it and you're saying to your players that, oh, you have to act this way because you're lawful good, you're doing it wrong. Um, you, you don't dictate to your players how they play. Uh, you can, if they're new players, you can give them advice. You can say, okay, this is how lawful good might behave. This is how chaotic a neutral might behave. Um, but beyond that, you know, it's up to them to play their character. What your job is the DM is you react and you say, okay, that action kind of seems to me, well, that kind of seemed chaotic neutral. So maybe you write it down, maybe you write a little tick, maybe you just kind of go with your gut and kind of feel it. And if you feel after a long while that the player, oh, well, they're not really acting like lawful good, they're more acting kind of chaotic neutral, then what you do, and I know this is controversial but bear with me what you do is you say okay you've been acting what I perceive to be chaotic neutral rather than lawful good so we're switching your alignment one step over we're not going all the way to chaotic we're just switching it now you're no longer lawful good you have a choice of going lawful neutral or um, neutral good because you're making one step towards that other end of the spectrum you're, you're going one step further you don't ever jump right across the whole spectrum of alignment from uh, lawful good to chaotic evil, for example. That's too much, too much of a change. But as a DM, that's what you can do because I want to say, like, my interpretation of alignment is it's not something that's inherent to a character. It's a description. And what I mean by that is you get your alignment by acting. You get your alignment by doing things and by interacting with the world. And, you know, obviously characters will have done this through their childhood. Um, so you start, obviously you start your character's life with an alignment. Um, but as from that point forward, every action that you do um, will affect your alignment. It will make a difference on how the, the universe, how the cosmos reacts to you. Because it's your actions that just determine your alignment and where you belong in the cosmic scheme of things. And that's why I say alignment is a descriptor. It's it's not a prescriptor, it's a descriptor. Um, okay, uh, another issue that came up, what about moral ambiguity? Like, um, people think that alignment just takes out any possibility of having moral ambiguity. Um, and again, some people are saying, oh, well, that's good because uh, there's black and white, and, and I like that in my fantasy games because real life is complicated enough and for a fantasy role-playing game, I just want to kill some bad guys and, and not have to worry about that too much. And that's a fine position to take. And, and I know Woodward was saying, Ugh, that sucks as a game, but, you know, that's fun. People like that. I like that kind of game. I like that black and white kind of game. But I wanted to say, alignment doesn't have to, doesn't have to result in that kind of situation. Alignment can, be, can still have moral ambiguity. You can still have moral ambiguity. And this is... Uh, another thing I'll mention about how I interpret alignment, which may not be necessarily the same as everyone does, is I like alignment to be front and center in the character's minds. And they say, like a character in the world, in the world of D&D, &D, for example, or let's say Greyhawk, characters will know, I'm a lawful good guy. I believe in law and good. And they, 
go to church or maybe they go to church maybe they go to something else they they have their little community and their community also says well we think that lawful goodness is a thing to aspire to so we do that so they all the kind of the community's in on it and um, now the, th the thing is you might think that you're lawful good or you're you might portray that to everybody in your community but maybe there is some moral ambiguity and maybe you're not maybe you're not at in your heart or I say in your heart but I don't think you ever in D&D you don't get to look in the heart you get to look at actions and um, you know I know there's magical spells that detect alignment that say are you a lawful good person or are you chaotic uh, evil or whatever those don't look in the heart at, at least from my my interpretation those don't look in your heart in your soul those look at you, the past record of your um, activities of your actions uh, because you, it's your actions that determine what your alignment is and um, so maybe you, you've done something that you kind of didn't realize that or you did something selfishly but you fool yourself into thinking that you did it because um, for some other reason or you fool yourself into thinking well I'm allowed to do that I'm allowed to steal a little bit you know I can steal Oh, I only forty dollars, or or let me see, gold coins. Forty gold coin, up to forty gold coins is okay, and and that's an actual rule that they used to have in the Catholic Church or something. Like you don't have to do penance or uh, confession if the amount stolen was under a certain dollar amount. So it's the same deal with um, alignment in kind of in the in-game world. Is that uh, you can kind of fool yourself with a certain amount of of um, acts that are against your alignment that you wouldn't normally do and you can maintain an alignment or you might act, you might lose it but you might not know it um, but usually after a little while you kind of figure like if you really are slipping you kind of figure out oh I guess I don't really feel that I don't love law and good as much as I kind of used to I kind of rather see myself a little bit more in it for me and kind of being a little more selfish and maybe I'm more neutral so it's a gradual change and you might change before you realize it or you might decide to change you know because there are a lot of different ways to do it and that's why there can be ambiguity moral ambiguity and uh, dilemmas and things like that because you don't necessarily uh, reality doesn't necessarily line up everything all at the same time uh, so that's what I think about that um, then there's this scenario where uh, you have like a leader who's a pallet and he's like uh, detecting evil and he says okay that guy's evil we kill him and um, you know I, this bothers me a little bit too as, as when I'm the DM or when I'm another player in the group and I say oh well I don't really want you to do that because um, maybe we need that evil person to give us information and you're just out to kill him I just want to also point out that um, it's not a good act to kill an evil person. <laughs> um, killing is evil. Taking life is evil. And um, you know, I don't care if if you're good or evil, or if the person you're killing is good or evil. Taking life is evil. And even um, capital punishment. I mean, I guess this is a subjective interpretation. So this is just coming from me. But if I were the DM and people were playing in my campaign, that's how it would. That's how it would come out. Um, is that there is this kind of absolute prohibition against taking life. Now that's not to say good people can do evil things from time to time and that's why I'm saying that it's not constrictive because maybe you are a lawful good guy but maybe you're also the executioner. So maybe every once in a while you do have to take a life because that's the law of the land or that's what the king has decided, that's what the you know parliament has decided that um, in this country we have capital punishment if somebody kills somebody else well the government comes and kills them um, it's in my opinion still evil but it's something that you can you can justify for a temporary thing or for like one guy who's it, it's his job to be the executioner and uh, he can take that on and there's there's a million different ways to mitigate that and to say well okay he he's the executioner but he does these other good things kind of to balance it maybe or he justifies it or maybe he's 
he donates to the church or he helps orphans or something that does these good acts kind of to balance it or maybe maybe he doesn't and maybe the executioner gradually slips away from goodness and maybe that becomes a new point of contention because eventually he will because he's he's taking these evil acts and he's doing these things maybe he won't be able to handle it anymore maybe he will turn to evil or maybe he'll just quit maybe he'll just say okay I can't do this anymore and I think that's pretty normal I think that happens in real life when people uh, have a job like a prison guard or a soldier for example um, such things like eventually you just can't take it anymore and and you gotta you gotta retire <laughs> and those are those are pretty high turnover um, those are pretty uh, let me see short careers at least as far as fight actual fighting goes because I suppose if you're a soldier hopefully you're getting uh, promoted and eventually you're in a place where you don't have to uh, be directly in fighting so I, I don't know how many years it, the average is now but um, and still, I don't think it's very many. I think uh, like five or ten years would be a, a long time to serve as an actual combatant, somebody who actually has to kill people. And um, I think the same goes for aligned societies in the D&D &D world, is that they believe they're lawful good, but they decide that um, they're only going to do this, if they are going to have capital punishment at all, they're only going to do it kind of temporarily. They're going to have a guy that does it for a little while, and then he's out, and then he's he can do something else. He can have a desk job or whatever. Okay, um, so and then yes, there there's back to the uh, idea of the paladin who's in the party and he's like, um, let's let's just kill anybody who's evil. Okay, that's not okay for to start with. But let's say maybe he does it anyways. Maybe that's just how the player decides that his character would act. And that's why, again, why I think that a, that alignment doesn't need to be constrictive because I think you should, as the DM, you should allow that. And you should say, okay, that's how he wants to play his character, that's okay. That's, that's a valid way to play a character. The other players in the party, they may react interestingly. Like, who knows? Maybe they don't like that. Maybe they can't, uh, maybe they can't work with that. Um, maybe they kick that guy out of the party. Make the player make a new character because that is not working for us <laughs> you know what I mean so there's a million solutions um, it doesn't have to be constrictive it doesn't have to be restrictive uh, the bigger restriction in my opinion is the party dy dynamic I, I think it's just the fact that um, if you have somebody making all kinds of trouble the rest of the party is not gonna put up with it unless maybe they will <laughs> maybe depends on the party but there, it, I, I want to point out it's always an option to create a new character it's also an option to have the party talk to him and just be like you don't have to do this like we believe in lawful good too and we don't think you have to kill everybody who's not lawful good or who everybody who's evil like we we agree with you and maybe they can't convince that other player but they could get a local priest in and played by the the, D, the DM or GM bring a local priest in, like uh, an NPC, and the priest can talk to the guy and he say it like he can kind of deal with his issues or whatever, and maybe that doesn't work. You know, there's there's still solutions. There's still things that can be done. And of course, kick the, if the if nothing else works, kick the player out. Not the player. Kick the character out. The, the player can make a new character. Someone, and if the player can't handle playing that alignment, like if he's just going to do it again, maybe assign him a different alignment, um, maybe have a, a, a separate talk with him off to the side and say, look, this isn't working, like every character you bring in is all this, is causing tension with the rest of the party and it's not working, but most people will get the picture. If, if one character gets kicked out because of his alignment or because of the way he's interpreting his alignment, then the same player is probably going to bring in a slightly altered character, someone who's going to at least he'll have different problems. Maybe he probably won't have the same problem, but he'll have his, his own set of <laughs> issues to bring in, which is good, both though, because that's part of role playing is is um, working out those whatever differences can arise. So, and I, I'm all for that. I'm all for bringing in new characters and and trying out new dynamics and just seeing what works because maybe maybe one of these combinations will be kind of neat and kind of exciting. So. Um, so that's what I like about that. Um, 
your question, uh, let's, the other thing was, people are always saying that alignment doesn't add anything. Alignment is um, just, uh, it's just tacked on, and it's just like you can take it or leave it kind of kind of deal. And I think to an extent it's true that like if alignment was missing from a game, I would probably not miss it that much. Um, myself though being myself I would probably imagine my character having an alignment just because I, I'm kind of used to that in, in a D&D &D setting. Um, one of the things that alignment can do is you don't have to spend a ton of time uh, thinking about what your character's personality and outlook and etc etc and they're okay they're a member of a church but they don't really like the church I mean that's that's fun you can do that too but what alignment does is it just it's just two letters LG I believe in law and good like LG two two letters tells you a lot about the character it gives you a lot of of assistance where so it it lets you make the character rather quickly, which I'm in fan, I'm a fan of. Although I suspect that Woodward may not agree with uh, that sentiment of of liking fast characters, but I like the idea of um, expendable characters and, and moving on to the next one and being able to try something new. Um, so so I'm all about the uh, what do you call it? the adventurer's lifestyle where the the character lives hard and fast and flames out uh, and then goes out in a blaze of glory and then okay move bring them bring on the next hero that's kind of my my what I like but I know that not everybody does um, some people like to develop someone that lasts for years and years and years and eventually ascends to godhood or so you know something like that which is fun too um, but I like those uh, those flash in the pan type of characters. Um, I'm a big fan of those. Okay, uh, so the question was, would you miss alignment? Um, oh, and what does alignment add? Um, so yeah, I was saying it, it condenses all that information into LG, but also I think um, a lot of the conversations that we do have about morality and uh, ethics and like right and wrong and, and things like that, I, I don't think would necessarily happen. Um, if we didn't have something that said what do you what does your character believe and um i to me i i find value in those conversations in themselves like is this a lawful good act um and uh you know i've spent i don't know how many hours on message boards arguing back and forth about what a paladin can and can't do um and i'm not i don't really care too much what the final answer is I just care that the conversation happens and I and I think alignment um, initiates that conversation the the fact that alignment exists in the game allows us at least kind of a foot in the door for that ethical conversation that maybe we might just never have um, because I do play with fast characters and um, you know I, I like to get things moving I like to get things going as fast as possible um, and uh, if you didn't have alignment, um, there might be nothing on the character sheet that says anything about personality or anything about what, what you do, so you might just not think about it. Um, so at least that does that. For, I mean, that's what it does for me. And I'm not saying that I have a lack of imagination as far as my character goes, but, well, maybe sometimes I do have a little bit of that. Maybe it, it just it helps jumpstart me. And I think it I think it should serve the same purpose for a lot of players too, um, and uh, so that's what I think alignment adds. Um, so we're talking about uh, okay. I talked about the paladin smiting any and all evil characters, and I so that's kind of out of the way. Um, Woodward mentioned something about um, smite infidel and how he liked uh, the idea of a character having a spell or a special power ability where he can attack an enemy of his faith or somebody who doesn't believe in his deity and cause extra damage or be like extra powerful against that person just because he gets a bonus from his deity against them and um, that's okay for maybe some campaigns it could be a good house rule or a good good um 
unique spell or unique power for a character to have. But in my opinion, I'd rather just have the smite alignment because um, my position on the deities in D and D is they don't really they're not like kind of like we think of God or well I don't think of God as anything because I don't believe in God but we think of of God like the the modern concept of God is this really super powerful he won't take any like he's jealous he won't have any rivals he's the only God there is and if you believe in him you are not allowed to believe in any other gods and if somebody else believes you you have permission to to kill them or uh, take you know um, you can evict them, you can kick them out of your country, uh, all kinds of things. Even up to, like, well, I won't talk about genocide, but I guess I already mentioned it anyways. Um, but yeah, so, so we have monotheism in our culture. And that's kind of what's, what's big. But the D&D world is a, uh, a polytheistic world. Um, and there aren't any... There can be a jealous god in there, in the mix somewhere, but he's like, like I guess the other gods would look at him and be like, like what, really, like seriously, you think you're the only one, and they would, you know, I guess they could gang up on him or something like that, you know, um, because the D and D world is a world that where um, the gods are not all powerful, like what we think of in, in monotheism. They're just extremely powerful beings that um, have very good big followings and they have big realms and they have like basically world-sized um, planets in the outer planes where they can rule everything and control everything but they're not necessarily infinite and also they have each other to contend with so there's no such thing as a god thinking that he's the only one um, but th I guess that depends on your game setting uh, maybe your game setting doesn't doesn't treat gods the same way as as mine. And the other thing that I was saying though about alignment is that characters they know and understand what alignment they have. Like they'll know oh, I'm lawful good, and they'll also know well I'm lawful good and my deity Hieronius he's also lawful good. So and I'm lawful good because Hieronius is because I like him and I think he's a good guy and so on and so forth. And it's kind of a reinforcing cycle. And um, Hieronius, in turn, he knows he's lawful good. He knows he believes in law and good. Uh, maybe not for the same reasons, but probably for similar reasons that characters believe in law and good. He probably has his own justifications and says, yeah, I think law is good because it, because I like having people in an ordered society and I like when people keep their word and so on and so forth and I like goodness because I don't like necessary unnecessary bloodshed I don't like unnecessary pain and I like people to be happy I like food and I like people to have uh, um, warmth and shelter and things like that and those, those are good things so uh, the deities they know that they're they know their alignment um, same thing with chaotic evil uh, deities. They know that they they don't like all this line, lovey dovey goodness, and they say I'm chaotic evil. I don't believe in that um, helping everybody out. You know, you gotta s treat yourself first. And um, they evil evil people can like good things too a little bit. I mean, they can enjoy food and they can like being warm and have shelter, um, but they don't necessarily want it for everyone else. Um, and they also they enjoy being a little bit sadistic. They enjoy inflicting pain, and that's um, that's worth it to them. To uh, you know, if they can just for their own amusement, they they can hurt someone else, and they'll probably do it because that's something they enjoy. But maybe they have reasons not to do that, and that's part of the moral ambiguity that's still allowed, even with the system that has alignment in it. Um, and you were asking, uh, Woodward was asking, um, why can't you have a lawful good cleric of a chaotic evil deity? Um, like he worships the chaotic evil deity because uh, he's afraid or he believes that that chaotic evil deity can uh, wipe him out. Um, to be honest, I think you could, like if it's up to the DM basically. Um, I think it would be, it would be within the realm of acceptability, you ju the way you justified it, because he's 
afraid that the chaotic evil deity is going to um, uh, inflict all this uh, suffering on his village if he doesn't worship him or become his his champion. Um, I think that's an acceptable thing. Um, I, I mean, I, I guess there's several arguments why that might not work, but it, none is absolute. Um, it's, but just like to take a couple, for example, um, a lawful good character would probably gradually become corrupted into chaotic evil, in my opinion, by worshipping a chaotic evil deity and just the various rites that you have to go through, the various prayers that you have to pray, um, thoughts that you have to think, meditations that you have to, because a cleric, you got to think of a cleric in the D&D &D world is, is very, um, they don't just cast spells, fight, and end the day. You know, they have all these other things that they have that they do. They do prayers, they do meditating, they do um, working with people. Good gods heal the sick, evil gods maybe, I don't know, every once in a while they have to do something evil and chaotic once in a while, like murder somebody or something like that. So um, I, I don't think a lawful good person would last very long as a priest of a chaotic evil deity be just because... Um, their either their lawful goodness would get eroded, or they would just they would become overwhelmed, and they would say, "I just can't take this anymore." Like I, there's no like I know my village is going to be doomed, but I'm just not capable of this kind of uh, depravity, and I'm out. Like um, there's nothing I can do, and maybe hopefully if they're heroic character, if they're heroic lawful good character, they'll mount a resistance against that chaotic evil deity and they'll, they'll or they'll call in um, heroes from another land and say, look, like we need help here <laughs> kind of deal. Um, so, and that's one thing. The other, I mean, and that was only one justification for why, for what might happen, but the other thing is the chaotic evil deity might just decide, no, I can see into that person's soul and I know he doesn't have his heart in this, in this chaotic evil thing, so no, I'm not taking him as a priest. Like, that's just not the way I work. Like, I'll, I'll pick somebody else, because there are plenty of chaotic evil people. And basically, what a, a, you know, a cleric's power comes, you know, according to D&D, &D, the cleric's power comes from the deity. Like, the, the miracles are granted from the deity. So that deity can just decide, well, no, I'm going to... I'm going to make somebody else my, my priest, somebody who's actually chaotic, somebody who agrees with me and will do what I want him to do. Yeah, but maybe he has a little fun corrupting a lawful good character. I mean, it can go either way. Um, so, yeah, once again, uh, not absolute, but uh, some different possible scenarios there. Um, so, yeah, and the point there is that, yes, you can transgress alignment a little bit. And... Um, and that's why I think like people have problems with alignment because they don't realize that it doesn't have to be absolute. And I mean, I realize that it's a little bit hard to um, when you see in the book it says alignment like lawful good characters act like this. It's you say okay, I guess that's the only way to act. I guess that's uh, written in the in the in stone. It has to be done that way. Um, but in, in my opinion, it doesn't really have to be. It, you can have a little bit of wiggle room, and I like that about, that. that's the way I interpret alignment, and I like that about, I like having alignment when that's a possibility. I don't necessarily like it when it's completely restrictive, but I understand when it kind of, when it is, and it can work that way too. Um, okay, so I mentioned also that NPCs and PCs will know their alignment. They'll say, they'll know, I am a lawful good guy. Okay, so I think that's, um, I think I explained that. Um, it helps with role-playing in that, like, because these people are removed from us, we're setting in this in a world that's kind of based on a world maybe like a thousand years ago, so it's very difficult to kind of get into the head of those characters and say, um, you know, what are they really thinking? Like, what do they really feel about um, about the world around them? And do they care? Like... You know, you think back a thousand years ago, there wasn't even a Protestant Reformation back then. Um, there wasn't, uh, if you lived in Europe, you were either pagan or Christian, and there wasn't different brands of Christianity to, uh, um, to pick with. If you lived in the East, there were kind of, there were some other versions, and I guess there was Arminianism. <laughs> I, maybe that's, I mean, 
that's why it's so difficult to uh, to kind of get in the heads of people like what would be th people be thinking a thousand years ago about um, morality and religion and uh, so on and so forth um, because like ideas like Arminianism was like uh, what do you do with that what do you do with Arminianism like do you kill all Arminians do you kill pa all pagans uh, or if you're pagan do you kill the Christians and things like that um, and um, the other thing I was thinking that you might compare it to would be like this idea of um, almost like a communist versus capitalist like if if you have groups of people you can you can hold a, a range of beliefs and still maybe call yourself a communist and you can you can be a communist and maybe you didn't agree with um, uh, governments in Russia or various countries in Eastern Europe um, maybe you or Yugoslavia or whatever um, for that matter maybe or you could be a capitalist and you may not agree with the current government of the United States um, but on some level you have this kind of this identity that's tied up with being like this versus that and I think it's similar to how alignment works and I think that what that does is it gives you a little bit of a key to get into the mindset of that character and that and how they think and they th they think of themselves as lawful good so that matters to them but there are other things that also matter um, so you know it's complex but I like that about alignment I, I like I think it adds to the complexity especially if it's considered in game world like it's it's part of the the character's reality um, I think that's interesting to, that is interesting to me um, you mentioned uh, just a quickly about alignment changing if you um, if you change uh, your alignment, you should lose or gain XP experience points. Um, and uh, I think you were saying you should gain XP if you change alignment, but somebody else had said you lose it. Um, as far as I understand, the, the current, the late, the last version that they ever made of D and D three point five was that there's no cost, there's no alignment uh, uh, penalty, there's no XP penalty paid for changing alignment. And to me that makes sense because I've, like I said before, alignment is descriptive, not prescriptive. And I just think that alignment, um, your alignment is a record of all the, it's the sum total of the record of all your past deeds. Um, so when your alignment changes, that's not a thing that's happening right now. Although, you know, the number on the odometer flips over. But other than that, it's not really, there's not that much of an effect. It's just it's just reflecting what happened all those times ago and you probably got experience already for for having those experiences um, and for maybe it's role-playing maybe it's fighting this and that maybe it's uh, whatever it is you had you did those things way back when and now your alignment is finally turning over and there's no point in adding or subtracting XP because it's just you know it's just another uh, thing that happens is no, what am I going to say? It's, um, it's just your description changing. Um, it's just, uh, do I need another analogy? Uh, when you're, when you're getting old and you're growing gray, um, I'm not, I still have a nice, uh, youthful head of hair or going bald for the, for that matter, going gray, gray or bald. Like at what point do you say, okay, now I'm bald? and now I get XP for, for being bald, or now I'm gray, now I have gray hair, now I get XP for having switched my character over to, from brown hair to gray hair, or from having hair to being bald. You know, that, that's the kind of analogy that I want to give with alignment change. Um, one more note on subjectivity uh, of alignment. Um, I just think that there there are a lot of debates about where alignment exactly falls and and some people get fed up with it and they say well alignment's really useless because everybody has a different interpretation of where the line is drawn where to draw the line and my solution to that is just that it's the DM basically who's the final arbiter of what alignment is and um, the end of the DM gets like in his own world gets to decide 
you know, that's lawful good, that's chaotic evil. Like I was saying about capital punishment, I think it's an evil act, but it can still happen, so I think that's up to the DM. Uh, so yes, it is subjective, but within a particular context of a particular game world run by a particular GM, it is, uh, it, it's objective as far as that's concerned. And that, it's up to that GM then to be consistent, or at least to try to be consistent, and also, if we're talking about a small group of people, the, the players can certainly have their input also. And they can obviously, and I encourage this of course uh, with my players, and, and I, I do this if I'm in a group, I will talk to the DM if I disagree with what a, an alignment change or whatever. And of course they have the final word. If, if th that DM wants to say, no, no, I definitely want it this way, okay, it's, it's their game, they get to decide. Um, but I... I yeah, I like that the players all get their input into what what's going on, what's gonna in the campaign world, and how that's uh, gonna be dealt with, and and so on and so forth. Um, so that's the subjectivity of uh, issue. Um, so I think I covered a lot of stuff about alignment, and um, I'm gonna end the video now. So uh, thank you if you listened to the whole thing. Okay, talk to you later. Bye bye.